<coughs> David, if you could please read, and uh, Trevor, if you could please translate. Uh, small fish was dropped at Hudson at a at 0 0.50. Stop. Uh, after 2.5 seconds, uh, what is the velocity of the fish? Um, okay, stop. Well, that velocity should be velocity initial. And then, uh, for, we don't know velocity final. And delta t is 2.5 seconds. How far below the pelican is the fish after 2.5 seconds? And then we don't know delta x. That's all we got? No, there's more. There is more. OK. Translation is an issue on this problem. We have to figure out what all this stuff is. There is an important piece which we have yet to put anything about on the board. Class, how many objects are in this problem? Two. Two. Do we have any differentiation on the board yet? No. No. So we really need to differentiate between the two. So rather than just listing all the givens, we should list what we know by uh, having to do with the pelican. And we should list what we know having to do with the fish. I'm going to use this symbol to, to identify the fish rather than an F, because an F usually stands for final. So I'll be using that symbol to identify the fish. Trevor, what do we know? So the velocity of the pelican is 0.50 meters per second. And I'm just going to specifically identify that that is up just because it specifies so that's an important piece. Keep going. OK. Um, so we're trying to find out the velocity of the fish, which we don't know. Okay. I'll put that for now. And then we don't know how far below the pelican, how far below the fish is, how far the fish is below the pelican. We don't really have a symbol for that. So what I'm going to put is the distance between the pelican and the fish equals question mark. Because we don't really have a symbol for this particular distance, so I'm just going to write that as a description of it. Okay. What and else do we know? Delta t is 2.5 seconds. And that's true for both of them. So I'll write it out for both here. We have the change in time is equal to 2.5 seconds for both. OK. This is better. We still don't have all the information. That's OK. One thing that's going to help, and this is pretty much always true, is a picture. Now, I do understand that some of you are not good artists. My seven-year-old daughter is a better artist than I am. Okay? You do not have to be a good artist in order to be able to draw a useful picture. I am going to draw a picture. Please observe. We have a fish. The fish is in the pelican's beak. That is an important piece. We have the fish and the pelican's beak. The pelican, I'm sure, has a body, probably has a head, probably even has an eye, maybe some ears, and some wings, and probably some legs, and a tail. Thank you. Now, the important pieces to understand is what's happening here. Frederick, talk to me what's happening. What's going on? Um, the pelican is the pelican is rising. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an arrow indicating that this pelican is moving upward. So we know the pelican's moving upward. Good. What else, Ginny? Uh, it's, it's going at 0.5 meters per second. We have that. We have the, the givens. I'm looking more what happens to the objects. Like what happens to the fish, for example? It drops. It drops. But there's an important piece to realize about what happens to the fish. Saying it drops is not enough of a description. I'll have to the fish upwards before it drops? Because when the pelican drops the fish, the fish is actually moving upward. What's the initial velocity of the fish, Arjun? He's not seeing it. Help him out. What's the initial velocity of the fish, Ginny? 
it's the same as the velocity of the pelican. So we know the initial velocity of the fish is equal to 0.50 meters per second, also up because the fish is originally going with the pelican. So the fish doesn't just go, go down, it originally goes up a little bit and then it goes down. And what we're trying to find is the velocity final of the fish, the velocity of the fish right here. So it's not just the velocity of the fish we're looking for, but rather the velocity final of the fish, which is right here. The velocity final of the fish equals question mark. And what we're trying to find for part B is the distance between the pelican and the fish. What else do we know? One other thing. Um, Spencer. Um, the fish's acceleration. We know the acceleration in the y direction of the fish is equal to negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We know this because, Megan? Because uh, it's a uniform acceleration and they'll, it's in free fall. It's in free fall. The fish does not have wings. The pelican does, right? So the pelican is not in free fall, but the fish is. Which means for the fish, we can use the uniformly accelerated motion equations. What about for the pelican? Kishiro, what are we going to do for the pelican? What we, we can't use the UAM. What are we going to use instead? It's not sand. Help him out, Spencer. Um, acceleration equals velocity. Change in velocity over change in time. We're actually not going to use the acceleration equals change in velocity over change in time. What are we going to use, Trevor? We're going to use um, velocity equals change in distance over change in time. Change in position. Velocity equals the change in position over change in time. So the velocity of the pelican equals the change in, now instead of x, we're talking about the y direction. And this is because the pelican's moving at a constant velocity. Unlike the fish, which is moving with uniformly accelerated motion. Okay. Is that a delta p? Ah, it is a delta p. It should not be. That doesn't make any sense. I was thinking about the pelican as I was running. Thank you. <laughs> Change time, thanks. All right. What? Now, Rishat, what do you want to do? Did you say Rishat or Rishat? Wow. Uh, Rishat. 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 Oh, no. I, we've actually got everything we need. We've now translated the problem. We just need to start solving. Again, we have all the information we need. We just need to know how to start solving. Help Rashab out here. What can we do to solve this problem? Uh, Tish. Uh, we could use a UAM for the fish equation. OK. What are we going to use? Uh, could we use uh, velocity final equals velocity initial plus acceleration change of time? This is the UAM equation as written on in your box equation sheet. What, how are we going to adjust, to adjust it? What are we going to add to this? Yeah. What are we going to add to this? This is not complete. Go ahead. Technically, I suppose we should call it the acceleration of the y direction of the fish. And the change in time doesn't have a subscript, right? Because the change in time is the same for both. So the velocity initial for the fish was 0 0.5, plus the acceleration in the y direction of the fish, which is negative 9.8, times the change in time, which is 2.5. What do we get for the velocity final of the fish? Please. Does it work out to be exactly negative 24, or did you round? Negative 24 meters per second. What does the negative ash in this answer for the final velocity of the fish mean? 
All it means is that it's moving down in the y direction. Great. So we figured out the final velocity of the fish, and we even identified it's moving down. Carpenter, what now? The change in position or the displacement for the pelican. Okay, so we're going to solve for the delta y for the pelican. Right? We can come back here. You can actually see we can solve for that using this equation. I'll go through and do that. We've got the velocity of ah, we've got the velocity of the pelican equals the change in y for the pelican divided by the change in time. We can multiply both sides by the change in time. We get then that the displacement in the y direction for the pelican is equal to the velocity of the pelican times the change. We have both of those numbers. Velocity of the pelican is 0.5. Change in time is one or 2.5 seconds. Therefore, the displacement in the y direction for the pelican is equal to 1.25 meters. So visually, that's this piece right here. The change in y, the displacement for the pelican, is visually right there. And it's an important piece to realize. The fish goes down, but the pelican also goes up. Brent, what now? Um, we can find the change in x for the fish. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to say the displacement in the y direction, the change in y for the fish. How are we going to do that? Uh, use the UAM equation. Go ahead. Uh, so I'm writing up at the top here. We're still talking about the fish, so I'm going to identify. All right, uh, change in x. One half. Can I say change of y? Oh, change of y equals one half. Can I put a subscript on that? Yes, yeah, so of the little fish symbol. Equals one half times the final velocity of the fish <coughs> plus the velocity initial of the fish times the change of time. And again, the time is the same for both. Okay, we have one half times the velocity final of the fish, which was negative 24, plus the velocity initial of the fish, which was 0 0.5, multiplied by the change in time of 2.5 seconds. The displacement in the y direction for the fish is equal to. Negative 29.375 meters. So that is this piece. The displacement in the y direction for the fish, visually on the board, looks like that. We're close. The distance between the fish and the pelican. see from the picture that we're going to get the wrong answer here if we take a positive and add a negative to it, right? We need to add, what I'm going to say is rather than the absolute value, I'm going to say the magnitude of the amount. So we need to take the magnitude of the displacement for the pelican plus the magnitude of the displacement for the fish. Because if you include this negative here, that's not going to work. So this symbol right here, the double uh, vertical lines on either side simply means the magnitude of, and therefore we'll take the positive plus the positive, and we get uh, 30... Point six two five, is that correct? Yeah. Uh, and with sig figs works out to be thirty one meters. 
So notice, a wonderful picture helping to understand what's going on. Identifying the known values with a title at the top to identify which object we're talking about and subscripts throughout make things very clear. Helpful for understanding, yes class? 